Hi, my name is Jordan Werner, and today I'm going to be talking about the effects of pro-social, neutral, and violent video games on college students. So this um, article, or this experiment, is by um, Muniba Salim, um, Craig Anderson, and Douglas Gentile. So Muniba Salim is an assistant professor in the Department of Communication Studies at um, University of Michigan. She works in the domain of interpersonal conflict and she's explored how media violence can influence aggression and reduce pro-social behaviors. She also uh, is an assistant professor in some psychology courses as well. Craig Anderson is an American professor and the director of the Department of Psychology at Iowa State University and he has a PhD from Stanford. His Research has mostly been based around the effects of violent video games on children. He has been producing reports for parents related to these outcomes. In 2007, he wrote a book on violent video games with um, Doug Gentile and Catherine Buckley, Gentile also being one of the authors of this study. Um, he has been a faculty member at Rice University, Ohio State University, and the University of Missouri. Um, he joined Ohio State University in 1999, and he was chair of the Department of Psychology, and he has been awarded fellow status by the American Psychological Society and the American Psychological Association. He is now on the Executive Council of the International Society of Research on Aggression. The third author of this study is uh, Douglas Gentile. He has a PhD in child psychology from the Institute of Child Development at the University of Minnesota. He has a master's in child psychology at the same place, and he has a bachelor's of psychology from the uh, State University at New York in Buffalo. Um, he studies media effects. He's interested in both the positive and negative effects of media on children and adults, including me media violence, video games, all different types of stuff like that. So as we all know, video games have been, become increasingly popular over the years from kids anywhere from 5 to 6 years old to 25, 35, 45, you name it. But especially now with the development of iPhones and iPads, video games are at our beck and call whenever we want them. And that's just the way of the world. Have you ever felt that when you're playing a game, whether it be on your phone, your iPad, your computer, whatever you're doing, and you lose, you get so frustrated, you just have a momentary lapse of judgment, almost. Like, you're just angry, like, oh, like, you were, you're compelled to curse or something because you just messed up that part of the game and you know that it was an easy fix. Well, this is, on a lower level, what these researchers want to study, how video games affect us as college students. In this study, it's specifically college students. So there's a lot of literature and studies out there about how violence, violent video games affect violence in children um, and college students and how it, bring, it can bring out aggression in them. But there's not a lot on pro-social games, which are games that promote pro-social behavior, so kindness, helping others, those types of things. So this study basically tries to measure this, measure the effects of these games. This study had 330 participants, um, 223 which were male, 96 which were female, and 11 were unidentified. There was six video games. Um, each person was randomly assigned, and they played the video game for 20 minutes. Before they played the game, they were asked questions about their aggressive and pro-social behaviors in their life, um, between strongly disagree or strongly agree. Um, and then after the video games, they were asked questions um, about the video game, like the descriptions. Did it make them angry? Were they bored? Were they happy? Were they aroused? Were they excited? Were they frustrated? Were they 
what have you. They also were asked to judge their ability. So were they well below average or well above average? And for the study, they were actually told that they were being tested for screen time versus cognitive um, behavior. After reading and um, kind of familiarizing myself with the procedures and what the methods were for this study, I believe that this is an important field, if you will, because especially in this day and age with what's going on in the world, um, well, one, if you're going to um, study the effects on children, I think that's a little bit more obvious of a reason to study this field because the children are growing up and are going to be the future of this world. Parents want to make sure their children are safe. They're not exposed to any harmful or detrimental um, media in the world that's going to make them into something, quote unquote, bad. But this study tests um, the effects on college students. And I think this is important because college students don't think that they're impressionable when in fact we are. Um, we're very influenced by the media. We're very influenced by our friends. We want to be independent. We want to be this own person. We want to make our mark on the world. And as a college student myself and being at the very end of my college career, I'm feeling very overwhelmed with having to get a job, thinking that my life should be somewhere that it's not because the world has kind of told me that I'm supposed to have this great job, make all this money, live in an apartment in this great city, have the best fashion sense, all this stuff, when that's not necessarily the case. And that's kind of out of the norm for a 20-something year old because you're just getting out of your parents' house, most likely, if you went to a four-year school. You're trying to figure out what you want to do. You're trying to figure out if you even liked your major or if it's possible to get a job and what you want. The job market is crazy. So college students are a lot more impressionable than we think that we are. We think we have it all figured out. And you hear about, with all the terrorism going on, you hear about 20-something-year-olds going overseas and pledging their, their lives to this cause that's aimed to destroy everything the United States stands for. And I'm not here to say what's right and what's wrong. I'm just saying I think people lose their lose their cause and they're looking for a cause. And I think that a study like this has some merit. A lot of video games are based on the 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 horror that's going on in the world right now. I mean, even last night there was another attack in France and it's almost like these video games they're mimicking that. So the main goal of this study was to test the effects of pro-social, neutral, and violent video games on state hostility and positive affect. Um, so basically, the study proved that video games do have an effect on people's aggression. Um, the pro-social video games reduced total state hostility, aggravation, mean feelings, um, aggression and um, they simultaneously increase positive feelings so basically the whole study the study as a whole I'm sorry proved that proved that um, the pro-social games increase feelings of positivity and the violent games decrease pos positivity and increase aggression one interesting finding was that one might assume that in someone who's already aggressive, the violent video games would bring out that aggression more. But in fact, it brought out aggression in people who aren't naturally aggressive, which is something interesting that I think happened in the studies. Something personally that I would tell parents is that um, this kind of study is important. I'm not necessarily saying this one out of all of them, but these kind of studies are very important because they show that there is a correlation between the way people act and what they're exposed to in the world. So I think it's just a message to parents all over that it's important to monitor what your children are watching, what your children are playing, and who your children are involved with.